COVID has screwed people's financial plans up big time. On today's episode, I'm going to be breaking down just how prepared Americans were before the pandemic, just how much people's finances have gotten crushed because of COVID, and my suggestions for you if you're financially struggling. Let's talk money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. Welcome to South Talks Money. On today's episode, we'll be breaking down pandemic personal finance. Let me tell you something. So for millions of people out there, the economic disruptions due to COVID are certainly taking their toll. If you're one of those people, let me tell you something. I feel for you. Let me tell you something else. If you felt the need to penny pinch during these times, you are certainly not alone. You are not alone if you're struggling financially. In fact, right here, 57% of Americans have taken an income hit during the pandemic. 57% income has gone down. 70% of Americans are delaying big purchases. This is known as discretionary spending. Should I buy that? Should I not buy that? And then you got 75% of people are worried about their future financial wellness. So just a quick recap. 57% of Americans' income has gone down since the pandemic. 70% are delaying discretionary purchases. And 75% are worried about their future financial wellness. These are not good numbers in America today. People are struggling, and I'm here for you. Moving on, what percentage of Americans actually have money in the bank? God forbid they get fired. Like, if you get fired today, how much money do you have in the bank to cover your expenses? Let's get in a breakdown right here. 35% only have one month worth of expenses saved up. So you talk about 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Boom, there you have it. One month right there, 35% only have one month saved up. 27% of Americans only have enough for basically one to three months. So basically two, three months, they are done after they lose their job. 15% of Americans have enough saved up to last them up to six months, four to six months to be exact. And 23% of Americans, a little less than a quarter of Americans, basically said, look, if I get fired, I'm good for the next six, seven months. So that's sort of a big picture of what's happening in America today. God forbid you lose your job. How much money do you have saved up? Most Americans do not have enough money to last them more than a few months. God forbid they get fired. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the numbers. Here you go. 42% of Americans have missed at least one bill, one or more to be exact, one or more payments since the pandemic. And even more worrisome, 39% believe that they're gonna have to skip future financial payments. So this is some scary stuff that's going on here in America. Listen, I'm all about telling you to save that money. Why do you need to save that money? Well, just take a look at the numbers right here. 57% of Americans' income going down, 70% are delaying discretionary purchases, 75% are worried about their future financial wellness. Look at how much money people have saved up. Look how many bills are being missed. Look how many future bills are being missed. It's not a pretty picture here in America today. We talk about the K-shaped economy where the rich are getting richer because of Wall Street and the billionaires are getting richer and richer and richer. And there's people on Main Street are just straight up struggling. If you're one of those people, I feel for you. Now let's take a deeper dive into the state of Americans' personal finance of what it is now and what it is likely to be in the future. So what you see behind me is right here, types of bills that all Americans have, the amounts, the average amounts. Then you have the percentage of Americans who have missed that type of payment and then the percentage of Americans who are likely to skip future payments. Let's start at the top, which is mortgages. Now, according to the visual capitalist, that's where I got a lot of this information. The average American right now, the average American mortgage, 1,268 bucks. Let's round that up to 1,300 bucks. Seems a little low, but that's the number we're gonna go with. Now, according to the visual capitalist, 17% of Americans have missed their mortgage payment since the pandemic. 17% and 21% are saying, look, I might not be able to make a future payment on my mortgage, 21%. So that's pretty high. Then you got rent, where all my renters at. Average rent is a little over a thousand bucks, 1023 to be exact. Here's the number, 20% of Americans have missed their rent payments and even scarier, 28% are basically saying, look, man, I might have to miss a future rent payment. So a couple of times you'll see an asterisk on certain numbers that I wanna point out. That's one of the highest numbers on this board. Almost a third of people might not be able to pay rent in the future. So that's mortgages and rent. Then you got car loans. The average car loan in America between new and used, when you combine them, a little under 400 bucks, 374 to be exact. 27% of people have missed a car payment. 
that's over a quarter of people. And then you got basically the same number over here, another 26% are basically saying, look, I'm not going to be able to make my car payment in the future. Not a pretty sight. You see some asterisks over there. Anything that's over 25%, over 25%, I'm going to put a little asterisk next to it so you can see that number in plain sight. Not pretty figures when it comes to mortgages, rent, and cars. Moving right along, let's talk about utilities. Average utility, 290 bucks. Seems a little bit high. 290 bucks. 26% of people have missed a utility payment. When you're talking utilities, you're talking what? Electricity. You're talking heat. It's freaking freezing out there in half the country. Missing a utility payment. What? Not pretty. And 28% are saying, yeah, I might not be able to pay my utilities next month. Not cool whatsoever. All right. That's utilities. Car insurance, right? If you're missing your car payment, you're probably missing your car insurance. Let's talk about how those numbers work. $181 is the average car insurance, all right? For all my car drivers out there, 15% have actually missed a payment and 21% say would likely miss a payment in the future. Cable and internet, we all need the internet. Cable, questionable at this point. Average payment, 110 bucks. Let me tell you something. If you're gonna start skipping some payments, this might be one you might wanna look into. In fact, 25% quarter of people have straight up missed their cable and their internet payment and 29% in the future are saying, yeah, I might just not be able to make that payment. You know, maybe watching YouTube, maybe, you know, adjusting your data plan instead of having to use the cable and the internet and all that stuff, that might be a plan for the future, but that's pretty high when it comes to people not paying and missing their cable and their internet bill. Then you got health insurance. This is actually pretty encouraging right here. When it comes to health insurance, $94 average payment, only 10%. Only 10% have missed their health insurance payment. That's actually good to see. I guess in COVID right now, with everything going on, the last thing that you need to be worried about is whether you can go see a doctor. So only 10% have missed their health insurance payment and as low as 15% are saying, look, I might not be able to make that payment. So those are some of the lowest numbers on this board. It's good to see people focusing on their health. Health is wealth, as you know during this pandemic, so that's health insurance. Then you got cell phone. How many people out there have a landline? Uh, not that many, so everyone has a cell phone. Average cell phone bill, 88 bucks, 20% almost, 19% to be exact, have missed a cell phone payment. Like you're calling a fan, and eh, 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 nobody answers, all of a sudden this guy missed his cell phone payment. Man, that's messed up. 26% say they might have to miss a cell phone payment in the future. That ain't cool, bro. If I need to get a hold of you, how am I gonna get a hold of you? I text you, it don't go through. I try to call you, it don't go through. I hope that you're saving that money so you can at least keep your cell phone on. Then you got alarm and security. Obviously, if you have a house, you want it to be protected, you have a security system. The average price of that is 76 bucks. 17% of people have missed a payment when it comes to their alarm and their security. And a little bit more than that, 19% say they'll likely to miss a payment in the future. Then you got a couple more types of insurance. You got life insurance, on average, 76 bucks. Insure, if you've got kids, you got insurance, you gotta make sure that you're protected. God freaking forbid, pretty low numbers, which is good to see. Only 13% have missed a payment on their life insurance and 17% saying they're likely to skip a future payment. Then you got dental insurance. You want your teeth to look good. You want to be able to see the dentist. Pretty low. Only 14% have missed their dental insurance and 16% saying that they might have to miss a payment in the future. So it's actually the silver lining here is that people are paying for their insurance. They're not missing their health insurance or life insurance or dental insurance. You know, that's something that they are prioritizing. But then you got things like cable, internet, car payments, car insurance, rent, mortgage, where people are struggling. Now, if you're one of those people, number one, just if you haven't gotten it at this point, I feel for you. I'm doing this entire episode for you if you're struggling out there, or if you're not struggling, you're doing okay, I guarantee you have a friend or two or three or four who are struggling. I mean, we all saw the numbers right here. Three quarters of Americans are worried about their financial future. We all we don't need to relitigate the past, but the numbers aren't pretty. So this is for the people who are struggling out there. What can you do? What can you do? Well, I'll tell you what you should not do. Well, it's very natural to have anxiety, to have stress, to be uncertain about the future, to worry, just, just to be distraught, to basically just be doubting everything. Everyone, that is very natural. So if that's what's going on in your mind right now, Dude, I understand completely. Like we've all been there. I feel you on that. That's natural. That's sort of like step one. But step two is to actually develop a plan and say, all right, man, like I'm struggling right now. Like, damn, like uh, how did it get this bad? Step two is to actually have a plan. Now with that plan, you gotta prioritize actually what's important, especially on these bills. Like what do I actually have to pay? 
for sure and prioritize that. It's important to have a budget, to gather everything together, your bills, your, your invoices, your payments, everything that's due. And most importantly, the thing that you need to do is adapt. You know how they say the one constant in life is change? Things change, things change. Nobody saw COVID coming. You know, most Americans were not prepared for this. I guarantee you the next time around, you better be prepared or you're just straight up not paying attention. So you have to adapt and survive, adapt and survive. Change is a constant, so you gotta just stay on your toes and not get down on yourself and have a plan for the future. Now here are my 10 suggestions that you can do in order to be better equipped during COVID. Here's number one. Number one, listen, ain't no shame in your game. You should need to reach out to local and federal assistance. See basically what's out there. What we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna provide a bunch of links down below, check them out down below, of things that you can utilize as far as housing, credit counselors, you know, lawyers, financial planning, student loans, all that stuff. There's going to be links below. Reach out to your local and federal assistants. They're there to help you. What's number two? Number two is there straight up hardship adjustments and deferments that you can do. When I'm talking about that, I'm talking specifically about student loans. You'll notice that student loans aren't on this chart right here, but there's a lot of Americans that have student loans. If you're one of them, you need to look into what options are provided for student loans. I know the federal government deferred payments through basically the end of the year, but now things are coming up, things might be due. Call your student loan provider and see what options are available. The same thing goes for your housing, whether that's mortgage or rent. See what hardship adjustments and plans are at your disposal. Check that out, that's number two. Number three, stop the bleeding. Stop the bleeding. So we always say if someone's injured, like the first thing you need to do is stop the bleeding and then develop a plan to get them healthy. So stop the bleeding. In, in many cases, what's the bleeding? Well, shopping. Shopping, you know, the shop to your drop thing. So you need to stop spending money on non-essential spending and impulse purchases. This is stopping the bleeding. Stop just willy-nilly buying anything that you want, going on Amazon, putting things in your cart, going to the mall, getting things that you know, don't necessarily need. Stop the bleeding. Number four is defer big purchases. That so we talked about 70% of people are delaying big purchases, right? They're discretionary spending, they're delaying it. Uh, what are we talking about here? Maybe it's buying a house. Maybe it's an engagement ring. Maybe it's a big wedding that you want to do. Maybe it's a big travel plans that you have. Maybe you need to pump the brakes and not do that until 2021 or 2022 because there's a lot of other things in your life that are taking priority. So listen, as we just talked about, defer these big purchases. Now, number five, what's number five here? Credit card payments. Listen, now, do you use a credit card? I use a credit card, but my whole thing is I pay it off in full every single month. I know a lot of you can't pay off the credit card in full every single month. My advice would be, number one, pay on time and try to pay it off in full every single month. But if you can't, here's my advice. The minimum is better than missing. The absolute minimum, whether it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it is, is better than just straight up avoiding not making a payment. Because let me tell you something, if you miss a payment once, all right, cool, slap on the wrist. All of a sudden you will start missing multiple credit card payments, that's not a good look and your credit score will suffer. Number six, speaking of credit score, you know what's more important than your credit score? Your net worth. Is your credit score important? Sure, of course your credit score is important, but it is not more important than your net worth. Don't be fooled in that category. Net worth over credit score. Number seven, you might have to switch it up. You might have to switch up. If something's just not working for you, you might have to switch it up. Two specific examples on things that you might need to switch up. Number one is your F and B, your food and beverage. You might have to start eating in rather than eating out or ordering in, right? So let me break that down. A lot of people like going out to restaurants, they like ordering food, they like going to bars, they like going to clubs, who knows if your club is still even open. But you might have to switch it up and learn how to cook and basically grocery shop and plan for the week or meal prep. You might have to switch it up if this is basically what you're doing, missing payments. Second example, you might have to switch it up when it comes to your car. We just discussed so many people are missing their car payments, their car insurance, they're straight up struggling right now. So maybe what you need to do is downsize your car payment and downsize your car insurance and gas, insurance, and everything comes with that, and tickets and tolls, and maybe you need to consider Ubering. Hear me out, I know you're saying, what are you talking about, I need a car. I'm just letting you know, if you just keep doing this and it ain't working, you might have to switch things up, bro, all right? If you're working from home or you're working very close to where you live or you're barely leaving the house these days, it might be more cost effective to forget about the car, put that thing in park, forget about the car insurance, get rid of it and start 
to use that Uber Lyft lifestyle. I'm just saying you might have to switch that up. Moving right along, number eight, health is wealth, all right? Are you focusing on your health? During all this nonsense of missing payments and missing future payments, are you actually taking care of your health? Meaning physical health, mental health, emotional health, are you actually taking care of yourself? Because as we know, health is wealth. Number nine, stop investing, straight up. If you have a 401k, IRA, and you're pumping money into it, and it's just kind of coming out of your paycheck, stop. I'm a big advocate of investing, I get it, but not when you're struggling to make basic payments. So stop contributing to your 401k, stop investing and start stacking cash so you can make payments. And you know number 10 is where I'm going when I'm talking about stacking cash. You know I'm all about you saving that money. Cash is king, especially if you're struggling to pay your bills. Now, I hope you appreciated this episode. I gave you the rundown of everything that's going on in America, everything that people are struggling with, and the 10 suggestions that I have for you if you're financially struggling. If you appreciated this video, I have another video I'd like you to watch. This is how to win the money game. Check that video out right here. And if you have not subscribed to Valuetainment Economics, do so below and give that little like button a smash while you're at it. And as always, save that money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money.